Hello guys, how's it doing? I hope you guys are doing well. So before going through uh, with the with the access control policy configuration, I want to show you how Firepower devices uh, or Cisco Secure Firewall, how the uh, how it, the data path, how the is the package flow for, uh, with this fire, right? Because uh, there is some uh, pre-processed steps. There is the IPS, the security intelligence, uh, the pre-filter, and let me 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 show to you guys uh, how this how the data path works with FTD, and uh, I will follow some guidance from Cisco, which shows us seven steps where we should look when we start our troubleshooting regarding FTD, right? uh that's okay following that let's go to the next slide so let's go more deep in the theoret theoretical part and then we go back to the practical part right we need we need that to understand uh the ways and where we should go when we start our troubleshooting in ftd so there is some tricks here that i will show you in the next slide but basically when the packets arrive on the ingress inter inter interface we check firepower will check if the, there is an existing connection if you need to untranslate uh if it has routing or if it has a connection to the egress interface go to the global acl and here we have the tricks because you have a couple of preprocessors here and uh, we will talk about that in a few check the qos policy quality of service Go to the Snorch engine, back, application layer, night IP, L3 route, L2, L2 address, uh, and go to egress, egress QoS and so on, right? So this is very clear, and there, but there is some tricks, there is some place that we must check before. And uh, as I said, that's why I want to show you that this is a theoretical part because it will help us to understand and it will help you guys understand how I do my how I do my troubleshooting, right? How the steps that I made to do some troubleshooting using FTD. So let's go to the next one. So this is like an ex, uh, expanded version of this, this global ACL, right? So in this step, we have a couple of uh, inspections and let's talk about this. First of all, we have the pre-filter. So prefuter, the default for the prefuter, we don't need to do anything. The default is analyze all traffic, right? So, but imagine that you have uh, a traffic that you really trust, but let me pause for a moment. We are talking about security. We are talking about malware. Uh, we are talking about a lot of attacks in dailies, daily. So we never trust in anything right in network so it's it's like a it's a per filter it's something that we can use but we need to take care of that so if you really trust if you really know the traffic if you really know that it's good we can say hey this search in this port or this search going to that destination in in port 80 30 i trust this traffic we don't need to go to the security intelligence, don't need to go to SSL policy, don't need to go to security intelligence, DNS and URL, don't need to even go to the access control policy and we bypass everything. So basically we coming from here directly to here. So from this uh, step here, we go directly to here. We bypass including the ACP. There is some more details that I will show to you guys, but basically we we, we use like this or to ignore uh, uh, the the further inspection or to block some specific traffic at the first uh, moment, right? The first check is the pre filter. Then we go with the security intelligence for IP security intelligence. We have common uh, FMC and FD downloads the list, uh, the feed list for that from the Cisco Talos. So let's say that one seven eight dot sixteen dot thirty dot one hundred. It's a known IP, a known malicious IP, and uh, Cisco Talos update the database, and we got this from Cisco Talos, and automatically will be 
uh, this IP address will be automatically uh, blocked in this step here. So basically, before we reach the access control policy, the security intelligence for IP will happen, and I will show to you guys how to check that in a few moments. But the, the traffic hit. As I said, as this type it here, traffic block it here never enters the later part, so never go to the next one. Basically, the, after that, if the traffic so pass to the per filter, press to the security intelligence for the IP address, go to SSL policy. SSL policy is for decrypt, resign, or do not decrypt the, the SSL, right? We can check, we can uh, try to decrypt most of the the SSL packets, uh, these consume a lot of resources of the, the box. So I will talk about more in details about this technology, but basically there is, this is the other step that we can have a block. Then we go with security intelligence, but now it's based on DNS, domain name server and URL. So let's say that apple.com, it's considered a known malicious and, uh, uh, FMC will download this information from Talos with, with this feed list and uh, well, this site will be blocked right before going through the ACP. We don't, we, I will show you guys how to do that. Uh, and then we, we go, we finally reach the ACP. So ACP is where we configure uh, the five tuples I, I said. Uh, so search IP, search ports, Destination IP, destination parts, and protocols, right? That's where we configure our basic things. Uh, but as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four steps before the package re arrive at the ACP. And it can be blocked here, 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 and here. And in the ACP, we're gonna make block, inspect, trust, which Again, let me pause for a moment and say we never trust anything. Uh, we could make uh, some trusty configuration, but could be a risk. But if you make sure, if you are sure, uh, well, we can use it, like bypass something. We can use it for testing. Um, let's say that we are suspecting, for example, that there is a, a IPS rule that is blocking. So to avoid that, uh, to avoid malware and file policy and intrusion policy, we can use the trust here. So trust me as no further inspection. So I check it the search destination and protocol, and that's okay. Uh, we can also have allow and allow me as hey, go to the further inspection, go to malware and file policy, go check the intrusion policy. We can have the blocks like we already did it. Uh, block, block, block with reset, uh, interactive block, which use the the authentication, the active authentication. We we'll talk about that later. Uh, then go to the, this is the other way. It's the other place that we 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 can check, right? To to see if the traffic is being blocked or not. Then discover is just to to FMC and FTP know the network. Get now the known host, so no blocks here. Right, and then we go to the malware and file policy where we can inspect dot uh, files dot exe dot pdf emails and so on. We will we'll do some make some tests. This we can detect, block, and alert. As I said, as this is typed here, we can do all of these steps. I will show to you guys. And the intrusion policy. Oh, sorry. The intrusion policy is the IPS policy, right? It's where we got looking for malicious traffic. We got the signatures coming from Cisco Talos and uploaded. We'll, we will configure that. I will show to you guys how to build your own uh, IPS policy, how to tune that with the, the, the IP address that we have inside the network. We don't want to our FTD or FMC looking through 0.0.0 slash 0, which means all the network. We want the traffic being inspected uh, by Snort only on the our traffic, if coming from inside to outside, right? And uh, I will show to you guys that later. So now what we're gonna check is a little bit about the Snort process, right? So, <clears throat> 
so we have the decode, which is the, the parts of the dynamic, our part of the dynamic acquisition. Uh, and DAC means we got that normal frame that came uh, until the ACP and transformed this in a way that Snorch can read, right? So we get all of this pack, we got the package that arrives at the FTD and we convert in a way, in a format that Snort can read it. So basically we have the same thing, right? Uh, remember that these four guys here is always is always part of the Snort process, but this is called the preprocessors. So they, they happens before, right? Uh, so SC for IP, SE for DNS, ACP evaluation, QoS, then we check for the protocols like FTP, HTTP, like this, go to file policy, and then uh, the some parts can back orifice. So all of this is checked by the preprocess, and then we go to the IPS evaluation. Uh, that's the steps that we have. So the identify identify the application, security intelligence for DNS and URL. File malware, APS, it's everything here, right? So that's the flow of the package inside of the Snorch process. But this is the this is the order, right? So prefilter, security intelligence for IP, SSL, DNS and URL, security intelligence, ACP, then malware and file policy, intrusion policy, right? So now we go with the seven steps uh to troubleshoot right we need cisco provide that that in a documentation and say hey follow this step to troubleshoot the ftd things so first thing we are gonna do is uh let's say we're gonna check if the package is reaching the firewall it's arriving right so we go to the package ingress that's the first the first point so here we can use the platform to do that, like uh, capture traffic at Clish. This command use TCP dump, so in, you need to know some about some TCP dump in the Clish. I will show to you guys that later. And other thing, uh, let me pause for a moment, guys. Uh, my FMC goes down. I don't know what's happened. I reloaded and uh, it shows a message that my my SQL is not working. So I what I do, what I will do, just a uh, little little pause i will bring this fmc back online and for avoid another issues with fmc i will i bring the fmc that was in the other side to this site and we will configure the high availability as soon as possible right probably in the next video so we capture the traffic at cliche and that's why i cannot show to you guys right now how to capture that so let me go back here so we can capture traffic in Clash, we can uh, capture it Lina, like ASA, so capture, name of the capture, uh, TCP, match, so on, we will do that later. Uh, the the DAC, so same thing, right, capture traffic at Clash or capture at Lina, this is the as I said, the data acquisition translates the packets to be read by SNARTs, uh, the security intelligence is not really easy to find out through CLI. We have the system support, fire engine debug, and the expert mode. I will show you guys that. But one of the best way to do it is go to the FMC, go to analyze uh, security intelligence events and check there if the IP the address or the URL or the DNS name that we're trying is being blocked. Then we go with the five tuples, ACP, right, access control policy, search IP, destination, search port, destination port, and protocol. Uh, here we can do a package tracer to simulate the traffic. We can do some captures. We can go with the expert mode and TCP dump. We can do also the system support, fire engine, debug. I will show everything of that to you guys, but that's the, the fourth, the step number four, right? So package ingress. DAC, security intelligence, ACP, and uh, we have the SSL policy. So we, we usually to to troubleshoot SSL, we use the system support SSL, the bug, the bug policy. All it's a little hard to do that. Uh, to be honest with you, usually I call Cisco Tech because it's not so easy to identify. 
uh, but uh, this command shows a lot of good information. This this is one of the commands that we used to show we got the col we collect the information sent to tech. Uh, the active authentication. So we have two ways, right? Active and passive authentication. Passive authentication. It just means uh, we don't need to the client to do anything, right? We got the information from the client. For example, we integrated ICE with FMC and that works fine. So this is the passive, uh, it will be transparent to the client, but the active, it shows uh, uh, when the client tries to go to internet, for example, it will show a pop-up requesting to client to insert, to type the uh, login and password. And FTD use a HTTP to redirect to caption portal. And as I type it here, passive cannot cause traffic to be dropped, but act can cause, and there is some ways to do that um, in Lina and uh, in, with the system support for engine debug also. So for the intrusion policy, we will pass through that in the real world, really hands-on, right? We can do it's to fi it's to find attacks and against no vulnerabilities. I already said that. Uh, and the ways we, we use to troubleshoot the IPS, it's system support fire engine debug and capture at the Lina. I will show it to you guys. So the network analysis policy is part of the pre-process and we is it's based on a uh, security intelligence, pre filter and so on, but it's the last step to check. And we can do that with the system support trace. I will talk about uh, I will talk more about that when we start to configure. It. So let me go back to our lab here and show to you guys. So going back here, we talk about the package flow, how FTD works, how FTD FTD treats the the, the traffic. Right, I think it was good. And now what I need to do is to recover the FMC. Uh, I have to do a manually configuration again uh, in everything, right? I have to configure everything from the scratch here. And uh, I will also configure this secondary, but this, when I configure the secondary, I will show it to you guys, and we will have a high availability of FMC at that site uh, because to avoid another, uh, another issues with the primer. So, when we have only one, you have we have nothing. If you have two, at least you have one, right? Uh, so that's happened to me. Uh, basically, the MySQL stop it doesn't start well. I did some search and I cannot find anything to to bring it back. And since it is a lab, I don't have license. This is a I don't have a, a tack for that. So basically, I erase it and I will start again. So guys, thank you for your time. I think this was very good to understand how FTD uh, packet, uh, how FTD flow works. So this is, I think, the main thing. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to be blocked, right? So we need to check each one of them: pre-filter, security intelligence, SSL, access control policy, and so on. So uh we will talk more in more details how to configure each one of these guys right like hands-on lab and so on so that's it thank you for your time god bless you see you soon guys bye bye <music>